All right, would you please say your name? Okay, my name is Latoya Rachelle Bowers, and I am a grad student at Texas Southern University. Okay. Uh, the first, well, my name is Shatira Wooda, y'all can't see me, but I'll be interviewing her. Okay, first uh, question is, when were you born? I was born in January 1992, and... I believe that was a Friday the 3rd, yes ma'am. Oh. Like I remember the day. <laughs> the time period. Right. No, Were you seeing? Oh Jesus, I think my mom was there. That's all I know. <laughs> Did your parents or grandparents discuss race or racism to you? Um, I don't believe that they discussed it. I know that it was more so like you always say yes ma'am, no ma'am. And I guess that was more so doing for any race. So for me, I think that was their way of discussing it. Like always be mannerable, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. So... In a sense, they did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What kind of interactions did you have with people not of your racial background? Um, a lot. I work at the university bookstore, so <laughs> half of our students, like myself, are minority, and then we do have those that come in that are Russian. Okay. Then we did have a Korean working there before, so I mean, I, I can pretty much bond with all of them. I didn't even see no Russians. Up there. I didn't even know Russians were here. Yes, wow. I had a Russian come in the other day. He was like, "Oh, I would like my receipt because I don't want you guys to think that I steal." Well, I don't think that you steal, uh, you know, but, you know, stereotyped. Yeah, do you feel stereotype happens a lot, like, uh, here at Texas Southern? It does, but it's more so, it's subtle. Yeah. So, they'll say, oh, those children or those folks at Texas Southern University, they're clearly talking about minorities because it's the HBCU. Yeah. So, of course. Do you feel HBCUs are talked about mostly or were looked upon to be, like, how should I put it? Do you feel HBCUs are looked at more than... For dominating white schools? I do, and I believe it's because of most of the, let me see, crime that we have here, and also just the interaction that we have amongst each other. So, of course, they're going to look at us because not only is our retention rate low, so it's our graduation rate. So, oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What, what moment in history do you remember struck out to you? Oh, my goodness, when Barack Obama became president. I remember being at the store, and the lady's like, mm, he won, he won't be there for long. They better make sure that they don't have another JFK moment. Oh, no. And this was the Caucasian lady. Oh, yes, how did ma that make you feel? Um, to me, it was more so like they felt like they had to compromise a bit because, you know, he's in office, and now most of the Caucasians have to address him as president or mister, and that's not something that they wanted to happen. So to me, it's like, it's okay. We had our time. Now you have yours. Yeah. Um, where were you? Oh, you said you was in the bookstore, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, what type of reaction did you give? Uh, to the lady. Uh, to the lady and to um, the way when you heard Obama won and stuff. Um, well, I was excited because I believe it's long overdue, yeah. not only for a black man, but also for a woman. So I voted for Hillary. Just note oh, that. Oh, yeah, I'm voting for Hillary. Um, look, so I, I mean, I was super excited <laughs> and it's something for me to show my children. You know, we went through this. Our past is in the books. His time will be... It added into those history books so then my children they'll have a round circle next we just wait no hillary getting that book that's it do you feel barack obama will be the only black president or you think it'll be more hopefully come? not you know but i think that as we have our children mm -hmm. then the caucasian people have their children if they have more than us because they can afford more than us mm -hmm. at times then we might still be minority and at the same time if we remain low and we have no choice but to not see another black man again. Yeah, because then you just rise. rise up. <laughs> um, <laughs> whenever you speak with a young person today, what advice do you give? Um, any incoming freshman here, of course, I'm mm -hmm. one of the faces that they see at the university bookstore. It would be to just stay on top of the way that they handle their business because it's just like at any large facility. This is an institution. So just as well as, I don't know your T number, but know that it's a number because I have one as well. Oh. So if you're a number and I'm a number, we need to make sure that those numbers stay a priority. And that's something that I have them remember at all times. Like we do the bookstore reserve, stay on top of that. No matter how late your loans come in, you have every right to tell them, look, I'm trying to pass, you know, my loans are coming directly to you, help me. And that's something I tell them to do all the time. Yeah, cause uh, my mama just had to come up here and uh, <laughs> like she just came up here and she had talked to the, um, Man and I end up, they end up finding me another $2,000 scholarship. Right. 
And I was like, I, was, I came up here so many times. It took my mom to come up here right. looking, snooping around. And it's all about respect because you being a freshman, 18, 19 year olds, it's like, oh, she can't rush me and all that. But out of respect, we're all young adults. So it shouldn't have taken your mom to come up here to say, hey, her number is this, her name is this, what can you do to keep her? Yeah, because um, they always telling us, oh, you guys need to be an adult, like stop calling your parents for everything. Mm -hmm. But only thing time things get done is when we call our parents right. up here and I just think that it's, I'm like y'all kind of being hypocrites like it's know. true they want you to grow up but then when you behave as a child they want you to bring your parents <laughs> so it's like I'm a young adult but then what I call the ones that I know are probably the babies grown children because mm. that's basically what they want you guys to be grown children yeah I still call them with everything <laughs> What made you choose Texas Southern University? Oh my goodness, I was not going to college. I was valedictorian of my graduating class in 2009. Oh. And with that, I received a scholarship for a full ride at any Texas-based university. And of course, I chose Texas Southern University. And I want to say more so because it's right in my community. Yeah. So why not give back to the place that clearly raised me or help my mom do her job mm -hmm. in making sure that I was a you know, contributing young lady. So I chose Texas Southern University. Okay. What um what was your major here? My major was human services and consumer sciences, but I focused on child and family development. Oh, what did you get with that? Um, well I have my BS, of course, and my job that I had, I worked at the Pilton Children's Center and that's where the children are housed from the time they are taken from their homes until they find a foster home or are adopted. Oh my goodness, ma'am. Oh, that's nice. Mm, what was that there? Hmm. Let me see. No, no, no. I don't know. I ran out of questions. <laughs> then we just still got four minutes to go. Let's see. Hmm. How did you meet your husband? Oh my goodness. Um, my fiance and I, we are high school sweethearts. So when I came over to Texas Southern University, him and his parents live in the Bellway 8 area. Mm -hmm. So they was like, well, you should support her and go with her. <laughs> and he did just that. And I was at the university and he was working construction downtown. And that's been together ever since 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever ran into somebody who just did disagree with all of your beliefs? Um, I don't know if I have. And if I have, they didn't voice it. Because I'm a person, I believe that everyone has opinions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I say something and you kind of contrast it, by all means, I respect it because we all have the right to choose and do as we say, like, the no, First Amendment, freedom of speech, by all means. But I respect you, you respect me, and everything can stay cordial. Is there any um, role models at Texas Southern University that oh you have looked up to? Yes. Um, one respected? of my professors, Shirley Massington, that lady is like a grandmother to me. Don't tell her I said that. She don't think she she, <laughs> she will hurt me. I mean, she's 70 something, so I'm pretty sure I can say she's not old, but she's elderly. <laughs> let me say it that way. Um, but she really taught me how to keep my drive going. Because you will have those moments where you feel like everything is against you. Midterm week, finals week, group presentations. And it's like, why even do this if I know I'm not going farther? Or why even do this if, you know, you guys are not helping me help myself? But like she taught me, it's not up to them. It's up to you to get where you want to be. And with that, I just listened to her. And even to this day, I just visited her the other day. <laughs> She's like, if you hurry up and get your master's. I'm working on it, lady, but, you know, when they see that you're willing and that you have the drive to get where they know you can go, then they're going to push you, and that's why I love her for that. Aww. Yes, ma'am. Did you um change your uh, major any time at Texas City? Oh, my goodness. Coming in, I was a business major. That's what I am. <laughs> More so. <laughs> and the reason I chose business was because my mom, was she loved accounting. So I'm like, I want to do a great job and show my mom that I can be just like her. And then when I got in it, I was like, mm, I yeah, no, that. I'm sorry, mom. This isn't for me. <laughs> so I went from accounting to social work and social work I really didn't want to do because I don't see myself removing a child from their biological parents or their caregivers. So I chose human services and consumer sciences. And basically what that does is just teach me how to 
really look at the way that a child or that a family is grown and that's why I really just like okay I can do this and I can use this not only in my neighborhood but in my job and I love it and I plan on going back there as well changing my major as a grad student so yes ma'am all right well that's what is it, it? oh by all means thank you you're very welcome anytime <laughs>